This is absolutely insane. There's barely enough room for the bloody USB port. Hey guys, I'm Tom with Tech Chap, and this is the new Honor Magic V3. And this is the thinnest, the lightest, the most comfortable, and dare I say, the best foldable I've ever used. I mean, between these two, I know which one I would go for. So a big thank you to Honor for sending the V3 out for me to have a little play with. And while this was announced back in China a few weeks ago, Honor are now officially launching this outside of China, including here in the UK. And they've basically taken everything that made last year's Magic V2 great and just made it even better. In fact, here's one I made earlier. This is the Magic V2, this is the V3. I'll be doing some comparisons throughout this video as well as versus the Fold 6. And when it launched last year, this was the foldest, foldest? The thinnest foldable you could buy at 9.9 millimeters uh, when closed like this. But Honor thought, no, we can do better than that. So here we are with the V3. Let me switch around because the new one should be on the right. And somehow they've shaved off over half a millimeter. This is now 9.2 millimeters thick when closed down from 9.9 .9 last year, and it is significantly thinner than the 12.1 millimeter Fold 6. Open it up, and you're looking at 4.35 millimeters. I just want to take a moment here to show you some sexy B-roll, just so we can all appreciate how unbelievably thin and darn right technically impressive this phone really is. Now, of course, one of the criticisms we had of last year's V2 was the lack of wireless charging. Honor said, well, if you want a phone this thin, a foldable this thin, well, there are some compromises and we just simply can't fit that tech into a phone like this. Well, I'll tell you what, those crazy cats over at Honor HQ have only gone and bloody done it. They've added wireless charging to the V3 and not just your normal slow old wireless charging, 50 watt wireless charging with the V3 in a chassis that is thinner and lighter than last year, and we have a slightly bigger battery as well. That is nuts to me. And my other criticism, no official IP rating on the V2, IPX8. So still no dust resistance like we get on the Fold 6, but we do have full fat water resistance. So to answer your most burning question, yes, you can now bring it in the shower with you. We also have the fantastically named Honor Super Shield Steel Hinge, which apparently is the thinnest foldable hinge you can get. We have their anti-scratch nano crystal shield for the cover screen, their Honor Super Armor for the inner tablet screen. They have put a lot of effort into making this as durable as possible. Smooth rounded corners, we have this octagonal camera module giving that kind of cushion diamond look we saw with the Honor Magic 6 Pro. It does add a fair bit of chunk to the overall design, but it does mean, unlike certain rivals, we don't get any wobble on the desk when using it folded like this. However, when you do open it up, unfortunately we do get quite a bit of uh, wobble. So the movie evens out. No wobble when folded, yes wobble when unfolded. You can't win. <laughs> What I genuinely appreciate most though, especially next to Samsung's offering, is the size of this cover screen. Even with the Fold 6's whole one millimeter wider screen, this is how it should be. The V3 gives us a 6.43 inch cover screen with a 20 by nine aspect. So it is just like using a regular phone that also happens to be a foldable. And being this thin and light, it doesn't feel like a compromise to use it like this. And then whenever you want, you can open it up and use this big tablet screen inside. We're talking 7.92 inches with a 10 by nine aspect. So it's basically a square. And actually we are getting a fair bit bigger tablet screen even compared to the Fold 6. Although I must admit, I do quite like the slimmer bezels and the squared off corners look a touch classier from Samsung's offering. But certainly for a usability point of view, particularly the cover screen, points to Gryffindor, I mean, Honor. And also look at the reflections. Obviously with this aspect ratio, you're gonna get pretty chunky black bars when you're watching your TV shows and movies, but I have found the V3 is a lot less reflective and therefore less distracting. And not only that, but the crease with the V3 feels like a generation ahead. You can barely see or feel it. And unlike most foldable phones, I can't say I ever notice it in day-to-day -day use. Power button on the side doubles as a fingerprint reader. We have stereo speakers. Both the cover and the tablet screen support Honor's Magic Pen, which unfortunately I don't actually have to test with me, but it does support it. Uh, we also have five cameras in total, three in the back and two selfie cameras, both of which get Honor's Magic Capsule, which is maybe just a little bit similar to Apple's Dynamic Island, but it's still a handy little notification widget. As for the screens themselves, while well, Honor have boosted the brightness, the cover screen can now hit 5,000 nits of peak brightness and 1,600 nits for the main screen. Both are 120 hz refresh, OLED, HDR10+, and Dolby Vision. 
both absolutely gorgeous screens, whatever you're watching or playing or browsing. But what I do want to highlight, because I think it really makes the V3 stand out, is the effort they've put into eye comfort. With their circadian night display, we have defocused eye care, we've got the blue light filtering from eye comfort mode, even a black and white book reading mode, all that good stuff. But the V3 also offers incredibly fast PWM dimming. And what this does is help reduce eye strain, particularly at lower brightnesses. And given how much of the day we spend staring at our phones, particularly when you've got a foldable, this is actually a really big deal. So that is what's on the outside, but let's talk about the processor. We'll come back to the camera in a second. On the inside, we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, same as you'd get on, say, the Fold 6, and that's paired with either 12 or 16 gigs of RAM, depending on the SKU, and also either 256, 512, or a terabyte of storage. In here, I've got 512 gigs. And the 8 Gen 3 is a solid 25% or so faster than last year's 8 Gen 2, and performance is on par with the Fold 6. However, despite being thinner, the V3 actually throttles less, giving us better sustained performance. And if I swipe down here, it actually translates to a decent boost in frame rate, especially at the low end. And it used a bit less battery, although it did get a touch hotter. But as you would expect, this will run anything and everything you throw at it, even with multiple apps open side by side. But I know what you're thinking, Tom, they've made it thinner and lighter and they've put a more powerful chip in there. How the heck could they have made it last longer as well? Well, those crazy cats have, because we actually have their third generation silicon carbon design battery. This is actually a really unique chemistry they're using to not only give us a big capacity of battery, we're talking 51, 50 million powers versus a relatively paltry 4,400 on the thicker Fold 6. And after 10 hours of watching yours truly on YouTube, the Fold 6 was down to 25% of its battery versus 31% on the V3. And that's despite having bigger screens. So the battery on the V3 is actually very good. You'll easily get a day and a half out of this. And that's helped in part by the bigger cell, but also uh, they're using dual E1 enhanced chips to make the battery even more efficient when using the phone. But also there's always something else because we have this silicon carbon design for the battery, not only do we get a big cell, but it also charges quickly. We're talking 66 watt supercharged wire charging and up to 50 watt wireless with reverse charging as well. So you can top up other devices. Can we talk about this camera? Because it's actually very good. We have a triple lens setup, 50 megapixel main, 40 megapixel ultra wide, and a 50 megapixel telephoto, giving us a 3.5 times optical zoom and goes all the way up to a ludicrous 100 times digital. And so across the entire range from the 0.6 times ultra wide to the 3.5 times to a still very usable 10 times and beyond, the V3's camera is very versatile. It also incorporates their new AI portrait engine and borrows from the Studio Harcourt collab they launched with the Honor 200 Pro just a few weeks back. You've got movie mode that lets you shoot in log with these handy LUT previews, which you can then later add in the edit for some very fancy cinematic shots. Honestly, I should make videos for a living. You've got the dedicated portrait and aperture modes. You've got pro mode if you want to tinker and loads more within the more tab. And of course, I couldn't make a video about a new Honor phone without jumping around and making myself look like a complete <laughs> Because yes, the V3 gets Honor's motion sensing capture, and it uses AI with a high-speed shutter to capture you or your fast-moving kids and cats and dogs in surprisingly sharp focus. Now, I found it doesn't work every time, nor for every activity. Apparently, cycling and skateboarding doesn't trigger it, but it is fun to play around with, if only to get shots like this. Very mindful, very demure. I also took a few snaps with last year's V2, and it's actually quite surprising how big of an upgrade the V3 is. I'm seeing much better dynamic range, particularly in tricky lighting, a more natural wide balance, much better zoom. Altogether, I'm absolutely loving the V3's camera. And of course, being a foldable, you have the benefit of the cover screen preview, so you can use the much higher quality main cameras for your selfies or for your subject to be able to see themselves. Say hi to cameraman Pete there. Plus you can prop it up in flex mode, effectively turning it into its own tripod for solo shooting. And then just a quick video test. This is being shot at 4K 60 on the V3. I can see the cover screen here. I'm using the main cameras, essentially for a video selfie. So if you're gonna use this for vlogging, this is very handy. I can frame the shot. I know exactly where I am, but I'm not using the 
low quality selfie cameras. I'm using the main one in the back. Now in terms of the actual software, I am running, let me see here, uh, Magic OS 8.0.1. And I've actually had a couple of updates over the past few weeks I've been using this. And actually Magic OS has got a lot better over the last couple of years. It does lack some of the bells and whistles like Galaxy AI and uh, 4 app multitasking that you get on the Fold 6. But in terms of the customization, how seamless it is going from the uh, tablet to the cover screen and just general use, it is nice to use. And there isn't too much bloatware, although I uh, do see AliExpress there, I'm gonna have to get rid of that. Now it would be a crime to talk about a new phone without mentioning AI. And the truth of the matter is, we've already talked about it a lot. We've got AI motion sensing for the camera, we've got AI portrait engine, we've got AI optimizations for the battery, for the performance, for the ID focus. There's a bunch of AI smart stuff going in behind the scenes that you don't even need to worry about. But on top of that, we've got some nifty features, including Honor's Magic Portal. This lets you touch and drag whatever's on screen to a relevant app at the side of your screen. So you can drag an address and then open up in Maps, you can drag a picture and do a Google search. This isn't new for the V3, but it is still a cool feature to play around with. We've also got some improvements to the Gallery app. So if I uh, open up the tablet here, a bit easier to use. Let's say one of my photos, blah, 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 blah. Let's go with this one here. So I've got this lovely picture of a castle, it's technically a moat entrance keep thing. Anyway, these people are ruining the photo. So if I go to edit down here, tap on AI eraser, I can then do a little smart selection around these guys, blah, 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 like so. And it should get rid of them. Back to the future style. That's not bad. She's left a child remain, which is a shame. <laughs> um, but before, actually that's a shadow of her bag. So these things always struggle with shadows. But just for a quick live demo there, that's not bad at all. It's continued the chain. Obviously we've seen similar features on Pixels and Samsung with the Galaxy AI as well, but it's really helpful to have this built into Honor's gallery as well. Let's uh, do another example here, get rid of Pete. Sorry, Pete. That did a really good job actually. <laughs> So this is the new face-to-face -face translation tool. Good morning, how are you? Comment allez-vous? I think that's accurate for my uh, secondary school French. So you have live translations. These are the different languages. Arguably, I find it a little bit easier using this face-to-face -face mode where it splits the screen. But this is a pretty cool use of the foldable form factor, being able to use the cover screen and the tablet screen for these live face-to-face -face translation conversations. Aber das ist eine ziemlich coole Nutzung des faltbaren Formfaktors, da man den Coverbildschirm und den Tabletbildschirm für diese Live-Gespräche mit Übersetzung von Angesicht zu Angesicht verwenden kann. Easy for you to say. I also have to show you this. This is Honor's Magic Ring. And you can see here, if I zoom out a little bit, I've got the Honor Magic Pad 2. This little guy, I'm actually gonna make a full video on this, their laptop the phone and like the whole ecosystem. So stay tuned for that. But Magic Ring's actually a really cool and very simple UI for basically showing the ecosystem, what you can do with the different products. So for example, if I tap on the V3 here, I can then tether my tablet. If I had a SIM card in here, which currently I don't, although you can see I'm running Wi-Fi 7, share my screen, that's probably a bit more interesting. So I've dragged that down here. This is such a cool UI for just at a glance showing you what devices you have, what features are on offer, and you can see here I'm now sharing my tablet screen, which means I can actually control the phone from my tablet screen, and this would also work with Honor's laptops as well. So I'm gonna show this off in greater detail in a separate video, but Magic Ring is definitely worth having a play with if you do invest in the Honor ecosystem. This is just two devices, but you could have your ear pods, your laptops, your smartwatches within this little universe. Very nice. I'm also happy to report that Honor promised four years of full OS upgrades with a fifth year of security, uh, which will take us to, I suppose, Android 19, 18 or 19, because we're currently running 14, 15 should come a little bit later in the year. And so that is the Honor Magic V3. What do we think? If you've got any questions at all about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll also pin final pricing, availability, and also a link if you fancy checking out uh, blah, checking this out for yourself in the description below. They've basically taken everything that was great about the V2, made it even better, and addressed pretty much every criticism I had of this guy. As with any phone, it's not perfect, but you can't deny what an incredible piece of hardware this is and Right now, it's the one to beat. This is my favorite foldable phone. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Jam.